the sound of the bell moves through the room and connects everybody in the room at that level of the heart. The mm -hmm. sound is something that that connects us. It also serves to 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 bring the energy into this quiet zone where we can connect at a heart level mm -hmm. and where I think every time I ring this bell, and I've done it many, many times in many, many circles, that somehow the energy of every circle that I've ever been in is brought into the circle that hears this bell again. Mmm, connection. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Jean, I, I, the, I, my name is Kimber Marie Lim with Transformational Business and Transformational Women. And it's my sincere honor to have with me today one of my most amazing, amazing mentors, role models, Dr. Jean Shinoda Bolin. And she has been just really standing for us women, for the planet, for people, for trees, for animals. For, for a very, very long time. And, and it's interesting because today what I wanted to do is I, I just wanted to share you with the rest of the world um, that may not <laughs> even know you're here because you've been someone who's really been spreading seeds of change in a variety of places, not for you know the sake of being known or the glory or the fame of it, just because simply that's, that's who you are. That's that's what you're here to do, and uh, and I'm somebody who really likes to shine the light on those that need to be honored. And um, so I want to ask you lots and lots of questions. I'm excited to hear about everything you've been up to. Uh, I do want to share that um, I remember, I had told you this story when we met, I remember that where I was, uh, I think it was the 1980s, It's uh, it's been a while, where I was when I read your book, The Tao, of psychology synchronicity, yeah. I remember where I, I was in the bathtub. I opened the book. I had fallen off the bookshelf in some store, so I don't even know. I used to haunt bookstores all the time when I was going to college, and I remember laying in the bathtub, reading every word, calling my girlfriend, reading the entire book to her, making her sit there and listen to. It. I'm like, oh my god, who is this woman? And that and was my first book. That was your first book. And here we are. I don't even know. Let's see. This is. I'm on my 11th one now. You're on your 11th. So this is like 20 some odd years later, and I actually get to be with a woman <laughs> who changed the very fabric of my life, who actually gave me that place to yeah. see, wow, yeah. wow, there's someone out there that's mm. championing mm. dreaminess, calling mm. us mm. forth. Mm. So tell me about what you've been up to well, all I, the last 20 years or uh, so. Uh, longer than that. It's been about 30 or 40, 30, actually. Right. But the, the first book, The Tao of Psychology, was about synchronicity, which mm -hmm. is a pretty common concept now, meaningful coincidences. Well, back in 79, it was considered too esoteric. Of course, we've had Sting come along with a multi-album uh, called Synchronicity, so now it's, it's common language. Mainstream. But mainstreaming synchronicity is a, it's like listening to dreams. It's like you start to realize that you are connected with things that you well, with the universe, it feels like you get feedback back. And there's a, <clears throat> a sense of being on your path when it's mm -hmm. going well. <clears throat> so I am, I've been on my path, essentially, from because each, each time I've written a book or each time I've helped inspire an organization to form, it had to do with <clears throat> being moved by something that came along, and I picked up on it <clears throat> because I'm me, and it... it there's an in, inside of me. There's a, there's 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 an inner part that says silence is consent. That mm. something comes along and I can choose to do something or nothing, and if I do nothing, it is a choice. Mm. So there's been an activist in me that 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 arose way back when I would say mm. in high school. Wow. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> and it, it is that part that that uh, has a sense of of social justice, has a sense of what's mm. fair, what's not fair, and and has over the years learned something about speaking up. Once in a while it's got a few lumps for it, but there's there's something to be said for for speaking for what is true. Mm. So each of my writings have come out of something that has moved me. I mm. talk about being pregnant with a book. Mm. The book comes along, the idea, the idea that if if I could explain it and I, also, I always have the feeling when I'm writing about the people in the room for, 
for whom what I am writing now might help. So for me, it's an extension of, of, of entering the profession of medicine in order to help people because I was so privileged, mm. because I felt so such a sense of wanting to give back. And actually, <clears throat> I'm just a little premature, was a little premature about that because what I'm seeing now with women who have been privileged to be affected by the women's movement is that they have that same feeling of wanting to give back. Mm -hmm. And wanting to give back is what's motivating a whole generation of women to step forward now when what we do will really matter. See, I think in the next decade, the tilt will be either in the direction of evolution or the tilt will be in the direction of gradual or fast going downhill. And the planet and all of us are at this crucial transition zone. Mm. It's a liminal place where we can go in either direction. And what I'm hearing about what you're doing with transformational women and what I'm seeing and hearing all over the planet, actually, and now often from wise male leaders, is that it is up to women. You know, when the Dalai Lama said that it's up to Western women to save the planet or save the world, I think he was really onto something, except that, and he was talking in Canada, I think in Vancouver, when he said that, and what people like the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu and lots of the wiser, older elders are saying is that it's up to women all over the world. And there's, there's, there's something mm -hmm. about the girl effect that we're learning, that if you educate a girl, the village that she lives in is, it, it has what has brought to it what she helps bring into her family, to the village, and she'll, she'll have less children, they'll be better educated. Everybody benefits if you educate a girl. Hmm. And there is something about from the girlhood on to, to uh, crone age women, especially by the way, that's, the, that's my generation, the women who benefited from the women's movement, the women who 